add slightly smaller dots with my ink pen here. So the reason why I'm also adding white in is because I think I want these petals to be more line work than paint. So I'm going to try that. Hopefully my white pen will work with me. You know, I think a lot of times we forget that stencils can be uh, about line. They don't have to just be about shape or pattern. We can use them for creating an element of line in our work. Right now, I don't like that, so I'm getting rid of it. I think I like the white lines. I think that's kind of interesting. I might go over it again. I'll try and get rid of this. As min minimal amount of pain as possible. That just seemed a little too contrived or something. Just bugged me. Now, I think the only way that this white, you know, line work is going gonna, is gonna to work is if I, you know, repeat it and really make it an element. All right, I'm just going to go for it. So I'm going to continue just like with my original design. I'm going to do more leaves at the bottom here. I'm going to let them overlap. I'm turning everything on an angle here so it's not all the same. Hey guys, so I have been playing with this and thinking about it and I think what I want to do, I love the white line work from this beautiful stencil by Flora Bally, the Bloom True stencil, it's just gorgeous. Um, but I know I want to carry some of that line work up into the lanterns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my pen again and I am going to outline a few of these lanterns in white. Not all of them, but some of them. And this one, I think, would look good outlined in white. This way I can bring that line work into the piece without putting it everywhere. I'm going to do this one. So this is a really great way to use your stencils, not only for obviously the beautiful shapes, but then to go back in and add line details.
I love using gold and I'm very tempted to add some gold in. Just need to decide where. I think I was going to put it in her dress. But I'm not sure. So I thought it might be interesting to actually paint some of these leaves in with the gold. Let's see what we think about that. So just really lightly. Now we have these kind of shimmering gold leaves, which are rather pretty. I'm still kind of wondering if I want to bring some more up here into this area. I'm not sure. I'm going to go around some of this line work a little bit. Hmm. Just had an idea. I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but thinking about maybe using some of these try some of these hash marks. Try it with a wood pencil. Let's see what I think here. So fun to experiment with the different, you know, line work and textures you could bring in with the stencils, and how when you do one thing, it affects everything else. So I am quite liking the hash marks here. Kind of staggering them again and creating a little bit of a a texture or a pattern. Some with some gold too. One thing leads to the next. Oh yeah, I like the gold on there. I know I'm going to bring, you know, I knew I was going to definitely bring some more gold into somewhere. I just wasn't sure where, but I think I like that. I like how the gold and the line work are connecting. The lanterns are becoming 
more important. Almost gives more of that painted lantern or paper lantern sort of a look as if they've got some kind of a foil uh, patterning on them. And then alternating it with the white. Where my white pencil is. Like and again, I don't think I'm going to do this on all of the lanterns. I want some of them to be a little bit, you know, not as important. And this is kind of the part of the painting where you just kind of got to go for it. I could have stopped several times, but I wasn't quite satisfied, so I'm not going to quit until I've reached a place where I'm like, yeah, I've given it my all. I like where things are going. You know, if the worst thing that happens is you don't like the painting at the end, I bet you learned a whole bunch of things from actually doing it. So keep that in mind. I like that. Maybe a few on this guy. touch of gold leaves up at the top, but I'm not going to outline them. I am just going to use the gold paint, kind of thin down. And then I'm going to get my little, little makeup sponge. Get some of that gold on there. want a subtle tie-in. To the leaves at the bottom. Let's see if this does the trick, hopefully. Yeah, it does. And maybe just a few. Remember you can also use your, your stencils on you know both sides. So when you want things to change direction, you know, just flip them around, right? is key. I love how soft you can get the shapes to appear using a stencil. And just a little bit of paint you can get these really soft little accents. And again we're creating some depth here because some of the leaves feel very much in the foreground because they're so defined. Whereas these other ones are kind of more in the background. Kind of framing the piece.
Just a few up here. I'm going to soften some of these areas a little bit. That one I went kind of right over that that lantern to push it back. Make it a little bit less important. And what was that? Hey everybody, so I have been working on her face a little bit. I wanted to kind of tighten that up. So I went in with my pastel pencils and started adding a little bit more light and shadowing to her face. I noticed in my reference picture that her, that her um, eyelids would be lit up and part of the corner of the eye and I wanted to intensify the light you know coming on the nose and even underneath the nose. So I've been adding these lights in and it's really helping to define the form of her face. And it's pretty amazing the difference when you just start to pay attention to those very subtle lights and darks, what happens to, to form. I also started bringing in some of this pencil. This is the um, another one of my pastel pencils, uh, number 460. You can see here where I've added the different areas of this pastel pencil, where I'm just kind of pushing that teal. I love how the stencils have kind of closed the piece a little bit here. I'm going to keep adding this pastel pencil in here. I really love how the clear gesso works because it uh, really gives me a nice surface to add the pastel onto. I also added in some of this teal into the shadows of, um, of this girl here. I'm noticing her ear is supposed to be in here too. I might suggest that. Her ear would certainly be in the shadows so we wouldn't really see too much of it. But a lot of times when you have complementary um, uh, color palettes, and you'll see this in film too, if there's like a really orange light on a person, the shadows are very blue. So complements show up in lights and darks as well, which is really kind of interesting. It's kind of fun to watch for in, in movies. Uh, Now I'm thinking I might do something gold in her hair and I think that will tie all the gold around her into her because she doesn't have any gold on her yet. 
So I am going to think about how I want to do that and I'll be back. Hey everyone, I'm back and I wanted to share with you um, a little tip that I have uh, when it comes to working on these sort of paintings that have a lot of detail and you know areas where you might want to experiment but you don't actually want to touch it. A lot of times I'll bring my painting onto my iPad and in an app called Procreate I can go in and um, modify things without actually touching my real painting. So I can try things on, see how things look and then kind of plan my next step. So I know that um, I want to tweak a couple things. I'm going to add in that horizon line that I mentioned earlier and I'm going to add in some of these little details including this little gold comb in her hair so that I have all this beautiful gold down here from the stencil but I want to um, incorporate it into her as well. And so I was able to figure that out on my iPad and now I've got a plan for what I want to do next. So I'm going to go ahead and do those final things. I'm going to add the crown I'm going to add these sort of drapey little elements here and I'm going to add that horizon line in and that's going to kind of um, put this more in a setting. And I'm also going to increase the line weight around this beautiful stencil here with my white pen. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I think I'm going to call it a day. my pencil here to just slightly thin out these gold lines a little bit. Make it a little bit more delicate. It's kind of scraping off some of the gold so it's not quite so um, heavy. And these are just little details but I think they make um, a big difference in the piece, the overall piece. Alright guys, so I think I'm going to leave it here. I had a blast creating this project with you. I loved using my stencils. Uh, I think that they really um, actually inspired the whole piece. Um, so it was really fun using these great stencils and um, just to sum up, I guess when you're, when you're thinking about using stencils in your art, think about um, scale. Think about choosing stencils that have different sizes so that you can use these elements uh, in different you know, areas in your piece to, to give an idea of depth um, and to create a lovely sort of balance of shape and repetition and variety. Uh, so it's a great idea to pick three stencils like this, a, you know, a large scale, a medium scale, and something smaller, and use them in your composition. Um, I loved picking the color palette and being inspired by this beautiful piece, and I will list uh, who this piece is by in the info. 
And it was great creating um, a mixed media piece using lots of different um, paints and pastel pencils. And I just had a blast. And I hope you guys will give this a try, whether you create something similar or something different, but I highly recommend uh, you know, picking um, a set of stencils that inspire you and create something around them. It's such a great uh, jumping off point to inspiration. And I hope you enjoyed this and thank you so much for watching. And thank you Stencil Girl for asking me to be a guest designer.